Hi, my name's Andy. Um, this is uh, part six of my first Raspberry Pi game where we uh, make a really, really simple game uh, on our Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, today we're going to do something really, really dull um, that has to be done. Um, but fortunately, we are going to cover, as part of that, two of the most important things you need to learn when you do programming. So you're not going to find it dull, you're going to find it eye-opening. So. Uh, you may well want to have a look at the blog post that will be linked from the show notes. It's got all the details here, all of the code, and it also has a link to um, my version of redgreen.py. Um, just in case yours uh, doesn't work, you can ch compare it against mine and uh, find out what we did differently. So, let's jump into the pie and get on with it. So, open up Leafpad just like we did before, and open up our program, which looks like this now. Uh, and also while you're there, open up um, LX Terminal, just put it behind there, we'll use it later. Uh, okay, so we've got our program um, and it displays uh, a black screen with the word ready on it. Um, what's going to happen at some point is that um, after the word ready's appeared, um, a green circle is going to appear and you have to press a key quickly, or a red square is going to appear and you have to not press a key. Uh, that's the game. Um, uh, but for now, we're, we're not going to uh, get any further with any of that stuff. What we're going to do is get rid of a problem that we've got in our program at the moment. So the problem is that that ready screen uh, disappears uh, when we move the mouse. And what we want is for that ready screen only to disappear um, if you click the mouse or press a key. Uh, if you just move the mouse around, we want it to stay there. So um, it's a really simple thing we want, um, but we're going to cover some really uh, cool, meaty programming topics to be able to do it. So, what we're going to do to start off with, um, just um, because we're going to need it, we're going to add a new line near the top here. We're going to write import sys. So, um, sys, uh, things like Pygame and sys, they're called modules. They're basically uh, files that we've got somewhere on our system which contain some code. And we need some code inside sys, so we're going to import it at the top there. Um, and then we're going to go down, and the first thing we're going to do, before we do the real hard work, is we're going to make a little function. We're going to put it just above ready screen. We're going to call it quit. So this is the way we, we define a function. We say def, which means define, then we give the name of the function, which is quit, and then we put bracket bracket, uh, and then we put a code on saying we're about to start the function. So, press return, and then I do four spaces as normal. One, two, three, four, and then I put the stuff that lives inside this function. Function's like a mini program. So, this function is going to contain this, pygame dot quit and one, two, three, four, sys dot exit. That's where we're using sys. You know, we imported sys a minute ago. That's why, because we're going to use it there. So, what we've done is we've made a function, which we can call, we're not calling it from anywhere yet, but we can call it, uh, when we do call it, uh, we will stop everything. We'll quit um, from the game. And the, the way we do that is we tell Pygame we want uh, we want to stop everything. So Pygame.quit tells Pygame turn everything off that you had turned on. Um, that stuff all mostly got turned on when you when you did Pygame.init up here. Uh, that tells Pygame to get started with some stuff. Pygame.quit says all right, stop all that stuff. And then sys.exit um, is a part of um, Python itself, uh, which says um, completely stop everything you're doing. So. When we call this quit function, that's it. Nothing else is going to happen after that sys.exit. Anyway, we haven't called it yet. That was just um, something we know we're going to need. Uh, so now let's go down to the real business end. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the end function, which is what we've already got here. Um, and we're going to fix this problem with it. The problem we've got is that um, this is fine. This clear line is fine. That says... Um, uh, don't worry about any events that happened before. Anything the user pressed or anything like that, the person playing the game, if they pressed anything or moved the mouse um, before, just ignore it. Forget about it. Uh, and then the next line says, if they do anything, uh, well, well, it says wait until they do anything. As soon as they do anything, um, stop waiting. But we don't want that. We want to uh, wait until they do something interesting. And it turns out we're going to need to do quite a lot of work to get that that interesting in there. So let's get rid of what we've got there. That's no good. Four spaces because we're still part of the end function. You have to indent all your code in Python so that um, 
uh, Python knows we're still in the function. If we wrote a line that wasn't indented, it would think it was outside of the function, that you finished doing the function. We want to write another line of the end function, so we have to do that our four spaces to make sure Python knows we're still inside the function. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a variable called event underscore types underscore that underscore so, so, I'm sorry, that's a long name. I couldn't think of a way of expressing what I wanted to express in a shorter name. And the events that we care about are something called a key down event. That's when the user, the person playing the game, presses a key. Presses a key down. Um, and the other one is mouse button down. I'm going to let that scroll off the end. So all that happened there was the windows got slightly wider. Um, don't worry about it. We know it says mouse button down over there. So what we're saying is there are we're making a variable called event types that cancel, and it's a list of events that we care about. And the events that we care about, the things that could have happened that we care about, are key down events and mouse button down events. Okay, so that's just a list. Doesn't do anything. It's just a list. Okay, now we need another variable. We're going to call it waiting. We're going to set it to this special value, which is called true, which means true. It means yes, we are waiting. Or yes, it means sort of yes to whatever, but we're using it to mean yes, we are waiting. And now, you're, if you're wondering where the meat was coming, because you've seen variables before, here's the meat. So, we're going to write this while waiting. Colon. And what this says is, we want to make a thing called a loop. And the type of loop we're making is a while loop. So what's a loop? Well, a loop um, is a bit of code that um, runs multiple times, over and over and over again. And a while loop is a loop that runs multiple times forever until the second part becomes false. So you'll notice from the line above, waiting is currently true. And we will keep on repeating the stuff in the loop until waiting becomes false. Well, you are probably asking, what's in the loop? Um, what is this while? So what the while says we're starting a loop, and we're about to do the stuff that's in the loop. So let's do it now. So, one, two, three, four to get level with while. And then everything that goes inside the loop, you need to indent again. So, one, two, three, four. So what um, we're telling Python is this line is inside of this loop. That means this line is going to get run repeatedly. It's going to carry on running and running and running until waiting is no longer true. And we'll see how waiting changes in a minute. So the first thing is we're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna make a variable called EVT, which just means event. I could have called it event, but that, there's a load of things called event, so I called it EVT. Um, and what we're gonna do is call the function that we saw before, that wait function. So what we're saying is wait for something to happen, but this time don't just stop when it happens, but uh, pass the thing that happened back and put it in this variable. So evt is going to be uh, the thing that happened. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Another line in the loop. So the first thing that we do every time we go around the loop is we say, wait until something happens, and when it happens, put what happened into evt. It's an event. Now we're going to learn about our second meaty topic, one of the most important things in programming. Uh, you might call it conditional execution, but I would call it if. So we're going to write if, and then we're going to ask something about this EVT thing. So we're going to what we're going to ask is what its type is, and if its type is this special type, pygame.quit. So let's go through the bits here. So we're saying get look inside EVT for this thing called type. Find its type. Find out what type of thing happened. So EVT is the thing that happened, EVT.type is the type of thing that happened. And then we're going to ask a question. The question we're asking is, is it equal to something else? So that equal equal is not the same as the single equal that we saw above where we're making a variable, uh, changing or creating a variable. Here we're saying, we're asking a question. Is it the same thing as something else? Is it equal to something else? So if the type of the event is, so that equal equal bit in the middle means is pygame.quit. And pygame.quit is a special type of event 
uh, which means, uh, which is a quit event. What that means is someone clicked the top right hand corner, uh, the X in the top right hand corner, or they pressed Alt F4, they closed the window. So if, if the person using the game closes the window, then an event will happen, it will go into that EVT variable, and its type will be pygame.quit. What that means is that this thing that we're giving to if to say, if this is all true, then we're going to do something, um, is going to come out, is going to come out and say, yes, that is true. Event.type is quit. But it, that's only going to say it is true if the person using the program closed the window. Otherwise it's going to say, no, that's not true. We won't do the next thing. So, what's the next thing? So, one, two, three, four to get level with while. One, two, three, four to get level with if. And then we're going to do another one, two, three, four to indent a little bit further. So all the lines that are indented after an if only happen if the if thing was true, if the condition was true. So in this case, this thing that we're about to type is only going to happen if this was a quit event, if the person closed the window. And what we're going to do, you might have guessed it, is we're going to call our new function called quit. So if the person asked to close the window, we're going to call the quit function, which will close the window for them. So they'll be happy about it. And that's all we're going to do. But if this wasn't a quit event, we're not going to do that. We're going to completely ignore this line that says quit. We're just going to skip straight over it. Okay, so let's see what happens next. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're saying that we're no longer in the if. We're doing stuff that's going to happen whether or not we got into the if. And we're going to make another line. It's called L if event ebt dot type in event types dot cancel. Again, we're putting a colon. Notice that whenever you're going to indent some stuff, you put a colon there. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And what we're going to say is waiting equals false. So what we're saying is, um, else if is what this means. So it means if we didn't get into the first bit, look at the second bit. And the second bit says, if the type of this event, so this is the same as what we had above, if the type of the event is in this list, this list is the list of things we care about. So the list of things we care about is if they press the key or if they press the mouse button. So what we're saying is if the type of event is in the list of events we care about, set waiting to false. So only if it's an event we care about, we change what waiting is from true to false. Otherwise, we skip straight over this line, and where do we go to? Well, because this is a loop, if we get to the end, we go straight back to the beginning. And we check again, is waiting true or false? So if this was an event like a mouse event, then, well, then it's not a quit event, and it's not a key press event. So nothing happens at all. So we go straight back to here. Waiting is still true. And what we do is we just wait again for another thing to happen. But if this event was a quit event, we quit. We've seen that. If this event was a key down or a mouse down event, we change what waiting is. And what that means is that when we get back to this line while waiting, we're going to exit the loop. We're going to stop waiting because waiting is not true anymore. And the while loop carries on until the thing on the right hand side is not true, and we've just set it to false. So we're going to exit out of this loop. And that is it for what we're going to do today. Now, if we're very, very lucky, so what I did there was I did file save, just to make sure you're clear. If we're very lucky, I would have typed all this right, and it's going to work. So let's try it. So we're going to run our program by going to LX Terminal and typing redgreen.py using the trick we did last time, and we're going to press return. Give it a while, because the, um, the pie is a little bit slow, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mouse around, willy-nilly, all over the window, all kinds of events are happening here, and yet we're not exiting. But if I click, it goes away. And let's try again, and let's do a key press this time. So move the mouse around, nothing happens, press a key, away it goes. And finally, we won't be able to see a difference, but there really is a difference. Let's try closing the window. So when we close the window, it should also go away, but it should go away because we're calling the quit function. And indeed, there it goes. 
So well done. You have mastered in one lesson, taking only a few minutes, uh, looping and conditional execution. So the while thing, that was a, a while loop, which is a type of loop. And the if and the elif, that was conditional execution. You can tell your friends. You know all about it. Uh, next time, we're going to draw a genuine green circle. See you then.